Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're just outside of Ankara, Turkey at the MKE manufacturing facilities where they make the new MPT-76 Turkish service rifle. We've been given the opportunity to closely examine this rifle and to even shoot this rifle and we're going to bring you guys along. Hope you enjoy. Let's get going. This is the MPT-76. MPT is Turkish for Modern Infantry Rifle. The 76 is a play on the caliber of the rifle, which is 7.62 NATO. This rifle is slated to replace the G3A4 in Turkish military service. The Turkish uh, developers of the rifle have told me that this rifle was built from the ground up to meet their military needs. Now, obviously, this rifle borrows from other historic rifles, such as the AR-10, and I'll leave it up to you as the viewer to decide whether or not it draws other design inspirations from more modern rifles. But let's talk a little bit about the unique features of this rifle and some of the features it shares with other rifles out there. Let's start at the buttstock. The buttstock, I've never seen anything quite like this before. It actually has 12 positions. You can set this stock to an incredible length. You push a button on the rear and rotate it, pull it out to the desired length, turn it, and it locks. It has numbers marked on the top of the buffer tube here, so you know exactly what your stock setting is. So you can collapse it, move it back and forth, and put it back to whatever position you would like it to be in. You'll also notice that the rear of the receiver is a little bit thicker than what you may have seen on other AR-10 type rifles. The pistol grip is molded into this one large polymer piece that wraps around here. It's a very comfortable feeling pistol grip, and right above it has an ambidextrous selector lever. It has safe, semi-automatic, and fully automatic capabilities. Here we have an aperture rear sight that has a, a drum on it that you can adjust the elevation by simply turning it. You can flip it down, flip it back up, and it has a spring and detent ball system in it. And over here on the left-hand side, it has another drum for windage adjustments. On the top of the rifle, we have a full-length 1913 pick rail. The T-slots are numbered on the rifle. You've probably noticed this carrying handle. You're wondering, why is it on there? Well, obviously it makes it handy to carry the rifle around. It does have backup sights integrated into it, but it also features arms throw levers, which allow you to quickly take the carrying handle off. It's not required for use. It has an A2 type ejection port buffer, it has a dust cover system that's made out of polymer, so it can be closed to keep garbage and stuff out of the inside of the rifle. The rifle does use a short stroke gas piston system. It is not a DI rifle. Moving forward, we have the front sight, which has a little bar and spring that you pull up on. It reminds me of the SCAR series of rifles. Pull that up, and you can fold the sight down out of the way, obviously setting the rifle up for use with red dot sights or even magnified optics or night vision, D-balls, things such as that. The aluminum rail here in the front, now it does have the T-slots for the 1913 rail permanently molded into the aluminum handguard, and the same is true on the bottom. However, on the sides, you'll see screw holes where you can add or remove additional rail sections. We have two short rail sections already mounted to the handguard up here in the front. On the bottom side, you'll notice this curved polymer piece. You can actually move this polymer piece forward and back and use it as a hand rest, or you can completely take it off the, the rifle leaving a full 1913 rail on the underside so you can put vertical foreign grips and things like that as well on the gun. One thing I've noticed is this, that when you have this all the way to the rear, you can't hinge the upper and lower apart when you're field stripping it. You do need to move this forward so that when you pop this rear pin, you can actually hinge the two parts apart. 
Moving out here, it does have a bayonet lug on the end of the barrel, and then just a standard flash hider out on the end of the barrel itself. The rifle fires from a 20 round polymer magazine. So you can see through it, it's somewhat translucent. And the fire controls are very similar to the AR-15 or AR-10. The magazine release is right here by my index finger, but also on the opposite side of the rifle, you'll find that you have a magazine release here as well. And then here is your bolt release right here. It's a paddle very similar to the AR-15 or AR-10. Now there is not a bolt release on the right hand side of the rifle, so it's only on the left hand side. However, the fire controls and the magazine release are available on both sides of the gun. It's also interesting to note that the Turks retained the forward assist capabilities of the rifle. And here's one thing that I found to be a bit unique about the firearm. It has a T-handle charging handle system like the AR-15, but you'll notice the locking mechanism is actually on the right-hand side versus the left-hand side. So if you go to charge the rifle like this, you can't do it because you can't unlock the T-handle. You have to pinch it and engage it from the right-hand side to be able to drill the, draw the bolt and carrier to the rear. Let's take a look inside the rifle and see what it looks like. That is really, really sweet. Smooth, that trigger is amazing. And that sight, the, um, the sight, when you use, when you really line up both circles, yep. and, and it is it's dead got that on. really fine front post. I mean, that sucker can shoot. You take those two circles, make them concentric, and, and that front post is right on. To field strip the MPT, first we want to make sure that the weapon's clear. We're going to drop the magazine out, pull the bolt to the rear, look inside, all clear. Now, as I mentioned previously, with this forward polymer piece set all the way to the rear, if I pop this rear takedown pin out, the rifle won't open up. So what I need to do is press here a little button, and I can slide this forward slightly, which gives me then enough room to hinge the gun open like you normally would an M4 style rifle. To take the bolt and carrier group out, just pull on the T-handle, pull the bolt out, pull the T-handle back until it hits its little notch where it can drop out. And then of course you can separate the upper and lower by pushing this pin here in the front. And now you've broken the rifle down into its two independent pieces. From what I can tell, there's no simple way to remove the gas piston system from the upper. I'm going to set this aside. We'll take a look inside the rifle. You'll notice it has a buffer assembly, much like an M4, and what looks like a pretty much a standard M16 style trigger group, including the auto sear that you see here. Three position selector. You can see as it's moving the auto sear back and forth. All right, so let's take the bolt apart. Now this is a little bit different. It looks like a standard AR-10 bolt, but you'll notice that it's under spring pressure. The spring that's pushing it forward is the firing pin spring. The tip of a bullet can be used to take it apart, but I'm going to use a small screwdriver. I'm going to push the takedown pin, which is right here, across. Now I'm going to put my finger here to capture the firing pin because it's going to want to shoot out of the, the, uh, the carrier. So I'm going to push the pin out, pull it, and then I can release it slowly here. And there's the firing pin and spring. The retaining pin actually goes through the rear of the firing pin, which is slightly different than the M4. Set that aside. Have the cam pin right here. I can draw the cam pin out. I don't have to rotate it. And draw the bolt out of the carrier. You'll notice it looks very familiar to you if you're used to the M16. Here's the face of the bolt, the extractor. That's it. All right, to put this back together, you simply reverse the process.
I hope you guys enjoyed taking an exclusive first look at the new MPT-76 rifle. I felt very fortunate to have the opportunity not only to closely examine this rifle, but also to fire it while here in Turkey. Zenith Firearms tells me that they hope to import this rifle in 2016. They're making no promises though, but they are looking into that possibility. I can honestly say I hope to see this rifle on the U.S. market. I think it has a lot of potential and a lot of interesting features. If you guys have any questions about anything you've seen in this video, you can ask those questions on our Facebook page. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash military arms. Also, please come by and check out coppercustom.com, which is our online store. If you'd like to support the Military Arms channel, that's the best possible way to support us. Shop at our store. Thanks again for watching, everybody. We'll talk to you guys soon.